Rack and stack. Let's get our devices mounted virtually. Funny thing is, I got about halfway through the process of doing this and I'm like, why am I not showing this to you? I just got so excited to get going. So, so those of you that have done rack and stack before, literally physically, uh, know that by the time you're said and done, your fingernails are bent off, you're bleeding, you're sweating. It's just, I mean, it's kind of fun if you're, if you're used to just typing at a computer all day. But it's grueling. It can be, especially when you're putting UPS units in there, right? So, so we've come to the point in Netbox where, hang on, let me flip back over here. We're, we're starting to put things in the rack. And let me show you, here's, here's where I was like, man, I should be recording this. What am I doing? Um, let me show you something I did totally wrong. Right. I'm going to start with a confessional right now. Take a look. This is the rack. And now, now you notice, I, you remember, hang on, let me zoom back out here. I started from the top. I was like, okay, up top, we have a patch panel, then a cable manager, right? Right. Now you're looking at the image and you're like, whoa, whoa, it's, it's upside down. Huge warning to you, right? I want to show you something. I'm going to zoom in on this rack right here. Notice, notice the numbering on, on the rack, right? Four, six, seven, eight. These, these are the unit numbers, right? And in, in our, in our rack. By default, uh, Netbox actually orders them from 42 down because some, some racks count that way. They start from 42, 41, 40, and, and I didn't even notice. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm having a great time putting all the, the devices in there. And then I was like, oh, because I, I realized I'm totally off on my numbers. You have to click on edit and actually go to descending units. Units are numbered from top to bottom. Don't! And as soon as you do that, I mean, it, it fixes it, but, but all of these are assigned to the specific unit number, right? So it's like, whoop, and flips, flips them right around. So I thought, well, this is a great time to go back. Now that we've added our device types and, and our, you know, let's start adding in the devices and, I'm gonna, and we'll do our rack and stack, right? So let me, I'm going to delete them. Uh, I'll put it on hyperspeed. Uh, and then actually I'll just delete it all out of there. And then, um, and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll go through it together. Right. All right, there we go. All the devices are deleted out of there. I'm going to go back here to the racks, right? There's my MDF rack one. Uh, everything's empty as of right now. So now I'm going to go back to my pictures. Now you notice I've got, now I noticed, you know, here's something that threw me off earlier. Uh, I've got two pictures, one of MDF large, which shows the big picture, one of the primary rack. Now, if I, if I look at the large picture right here, I can see at the very top, I have a 2U cable manager, which then goes to a, it looks like a 1U patch panel right there. Actually, maybe, nope, nope, 2U a patch panel. Then I come into a cable manager. But the problem is, as I looked at this picture, I, I just noticed, man, I've cut a bunch of stuff off. If you look right here, I'm starting from, from uh, uh, rack number uh, or unit number four right there, right? So, so I'm not seeing in this big picture above this. So this is four at the top. There's actually a three, two, one, which is shown in this picture, which is I've got a 2U cable manager, and then a 2U patch panel after that, then to, you see, see where I'm going, right? So man, man, what a terrible picture. I, I should have scooted the camera up, but, but that's the, the, the thing is, is stuff like that can totally throw you off. It did for me. So, so I'm going to come here. I'm going to say, okay, let's go to the front and I'm going to add a device in there. And I know some of this is going to be a review, right? Cable management device type. This is going to be a 2U cable manager. That's, that's sitting there at the right there, top of the rack. Bingo, right? Right there. Uh, so I'm going to come back here and go, no chat, no serial, no acid attack, no name. Otherwise you start getting duplicate conflicts, things like that. So I'm going to click on create, go back to the rack. Oh, what have I done? Let's, let's, uh, let's come back here and fix this. It's going to be the, uh, lowest unit number unit one. There we go. Update MDF rack. There we go. Now it's at the top. Now, uh, right here, I've got a 2U patch panel. So we'll go cable management type. Patch panel. And I know I'm doing this fast, and it's because I've, I've done this done this with you before. I'm just now putting all the puzzle pieces together. There we go. To you, patch panel. Okay, let's come back here. So, uh, cable management. To you, patch panel. Another cable management. Another to you, patch panel. Another cable management. Okay, you you got the idea. So I'm going to do this this part on hyperspeed right here. All right, there we go. We've got cable manager. So that's one, two, three cable managers. One two to you patch panel. So looking back at this, one, two, three cable managers, one, two to you patch panels. And then we are down to our router right there, right? So now I can get in and start adding the real devices. So I'm going to, I'm going to say this is a uh, US 1005 RT01. That's our first router there. It is a router. We're going to say device type. It is an edge router pro. 
I'll hit create and bada bing, I now have a device added to the rack. Look at that, with all the correct interfaces available for me to start connecting, the plug, the console port, all available for me to start connecting, right? Because why I invested the time in the, in the, in the template, right? The, the device template is now used, the device type I should say, which is the template, is now used to create these devices and add all the correct components. Sweet. So now, come back here, I can look at the rack, MDF rack one, and there's my first router. Now, okay, so let me let me add, let me, let me go back to this picture. Then I've got a 2U cable manager, and now I've got my first switch, which now if I come to the uh, the, the, the more detailed, I can see that's in, in uh, unit 14. Hang on, hang on, let's, let's add it in, right? So right here, I'm gonna add our 2U cable manager. Right there, right there. Create, good. And correct, yes, unit 14. So we're, we're lining up. You see how this, this goes? And, and in a way, it's kind of like, sweet. Like, like, like I'm creating, like it's, it's a, you get what I'm saying, right? So, so I'm gonna go to uh, 14 right there. I'm gonna add device roll. Now we're into our first switch. It is, hang on, you can even see it in the picture. US 1005 SW01. Uh, US 1005 SW01. It is a Cisco SG552P, right? I know we can't see it. You can see 52 ports, very small uh, right there. But that's uh, that's that's the model of switch, which is, again, already outfit. And this is what I want to show you. You know, and the, by the way, this is where I would want to put in serial numbers, acid tags if I had them. I'm just I'm just adding devices right now, right? So I'm going to click on create. Look at that. Switch added. It's got all the right interfaces all the way down, right? So where I can, again, this is going to be where we go in the next video where we start connecting the devices. Um, this is also, let's see, where are we? Dang it, I just realized something. I've got, I've got all the interfaces. I don't have any power plugs or console ports. I, I bet I forgot to add those to the device types. Ugh. Come back here, SG300. Yep, sure enough, forgot to add it. Uh, so power ports, oh man, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get on myself. So we'll just call this plug zero, right? Type, what kind of port it is. It's standard NEMA 1-15P. Maximum draw, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna have to take a guess here. Uh, I th actually, I think it's like, six, it's 50, it's power, uh, let's just go 385 watts, right? Allocated draw, um, we'll say, we'll, we'll, we'll budget this guy at 200 watts per, per switch, right? Create. So now we've got the plug in there and I'm gonna add the console port, con zero. Uh, and the type, it's an RJ45 serial, create, right? Man, I thought I did that. I'm, I'm having weird, weird flashbacks. Now I'm going to go look at the rack and click on the device and take a look at this. This is the problem with not having good templates, not having good device types. It's not going to update the devices you've already added. This is why, you know, if you see these things, fix them now or else you're going to end up with a whole bunch of, of, of bad devices in there that you have to delete later, right? So I'm going to go back and go, or, or just manually add all those things to, right? You don't want to do that. So we go back here, click on this guy. It is, once again, US 1005 SW01, device roll switch, device type 52P, and now, create, we should see, yes, this right over here. We see the console port, we see the power unit, and we see all the interfaces that I've added in there. That this is, this, oh man, this is why it's so good that we're doing this together right now, is I want you to see if you have your rack flipped upside down, if you haven't added the device types with all the information that you want, you're harming yourself. There is a best way to get started with Netbox, and that's what I'm showing you right now. Do the templates right, the device types right, then get them added in there, right? And, and so, so I'm gonna do the, the rest of this rack, at least up to the bottom of the switches, because there's some mysterious devices down there. I don't even know what they are, right? Um, down to the bottom of the switches, um, get them in the rack, and then I'll show you the completed picture. All right, my friends, there we go. We are, we are back and I've got all of the, you can see the gray. Don't you love the color code? The gray for all the cable management. We've got the router in red. We've got the switch one, two, three, four with the, with the different models of switches assigned. Looking back again at this, at this picture, that's, that's where we're at. We've got, you now again, this is the one that's cut off at the top, but down here you can see by the time we get to, uh, you know, it looks like 24, 25 unit. And then look at this. Do you see anything mounted there on 26? No, it's blank. There, you can't see it in the, the photo, but you can assume that's an empty unit right there. And then that we're down here to some auto patch device. It, look, it looks like a KVM or something like that um, connected to um, 
to something. I don't, I don't know what that is. So, so that's, that's where I'm going to stop. Um, but if we look right here, it's exact, you know, down here we can put mystery device or whatever else we want inside of there. But this is where we've got our rack now configured. Now, now I'm noticing something right here. Look at this. Hang on, hang on. Oop, little inconsistency right here. It looks like switch one and switch three are configured as full front to back devices. I think that's another mistake, right? Hang on, let's go look at our, our devices. Uh, there's switch one, right? And I'm doing this so you can just get familiar. It looks like the, the 52P, it looks like in that device type, uh, I must have forgotten to uncheck. Ah, look at that. Look at that. Bada bing is full depth is still checked, which it's not a full depth device. So I can uncheck that. Now, now I know what you're thinking. You're like, okay, if you edit that and then uncheck that full depth device, does that, does that now update the, um, the, the devices in the rack? And the answer is absolutely yes, it does. Now you're like, well, wait a second. Inconsistent. I thought the interface, well, yes, the components have to be added when you add the device. The components don't automatically update, but if you if you update an attribute of the device type as a whole, the device type itself, not the components, right? Then it will update all the devices in the rack. And and some of that was intentional by the creators of Netbox. They're like, okay, you may have this, you know, it's of that device type, but it's a little weird. So maybe there's there, there's going to be a situation where you want something that not that, you know, you don't want the template to lock you in to where you can't update something over here, right? Maybe you've got a custom module, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? So, so that's why the components don't update, but the device type as a whole, that will update what's in the rack. So at this point, we've now done a little rack and stack. Um, obviously there's more in that rack, but I'm, I, you've got the idea. It's just rinse and repeat from here on out. So at this point, our rack is prepared. We're ready to start moving on to some of the cabling and power outlets, right? It's that simple.